Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so we just uh, did anti derivatives beginning of chapter six. We're going to kind of go away from those for just a little bit. This is kind of a weird chapter, kind of jumps around a little bit, but it all comes, gets tied in together at the end. Uh, so it's going to feel a little weird and a little funny. Um, bear with it for a few days until it kind of all comes together and then you'll make all the connections. Right now we're going to change gears a little bit and we're going to find uh, area under curve. So you see this here, it says finding area under a curve using inscribed or circumscribed rectangles. So what we're going to do, ultimately we're looking for a way to find a nice little formula for finding area under curve. It takes a little while to get there, so that's what I mean. we're going to jump around. So right now you see this curve y equals 16 minus x squared. Um, typically we have a starting and an end point, so I call it x sub 0 and x sub n. We're going to be specific and we're going to uh, call it 0, 3. So we're going to start with a really basic problem and just estimate this area. Okay, We're going to break this up into rectangles. And you notice I drew two different types of rectangles. One are kind of the blue topped rectangles, which are the inscribed rectangles, um, inscribed meaning inside that curve. And then the red ones are the circumscribed ones, meaning the ones outside the curve. If the curve had minimum and maximum points curved up and down, up and down, then they wouldn't all be inscribed or all be circumscribed. So I'm just giving you a nice little example right now since this curve is always decreasing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pick a certain amount of rectangles and find the area estimating it, You know, depending on whether we use inscribed or circumscribed. If we use inscribed, we're gonna be too low. If we use circumscribed, we're gonna be too high. So uh, the first, Example is just pure arithmetic. Nothing tricky going on. No calculus. We're headed towards that. Ultimately, not today. A lot of just algebra today. Arithmetic, really. Um, so uh, what I did is I took this region zero to three, and I'm going to break it up into six rectangles, each one having a width of one half. So right now we're going to pick the number of rectangles we start with, and we're going to pick it, and then we're going to draw those rectangles so they all have the same width. So I just picked uh, six rectangles, each one have the width one half. Um, this is just summation formula. You've probably seen this before. Um, so we're going to take the function um, <clears throat> evaluated at certain points, x sub n, and we're going from k equals 1 to n. And then, um, actually, sorry about that. This should be a k here, x sub k, x sub k. The widths are all the same. The widths are all a half. Uh, later on, we're going to change that so they're not all half because it will make the approximations better, if, especially if we're increasing and decreasing. Okay. So all you're going to see me here is just doing the math. So um, the one half that I factored out is the width of each rectangle. And then I just plugged in, so if I'm doing inscribed rectangles first, that means the inscribed are like the right-hand endpoints because notice the inscribed ones are the ones starting here. So the first... Um, the width, this is the width, this is my delta x, the one half, all right? And then that one half is the first right-hand endpoint that I just plugged into the formula, 16 minus x squared, or 16 minus one half. So I'm going to call this like rectangle one, rectangle two, rectangle three. There would be six rectangles, right? So this right here is the height of rectangle one when I plug in one half. Then I plug in one, that's rectangle two. Then I plug in one and a half, two two and a half and three. So those are all the heights. Each one of those gets multiplied by the width, all right? Pretty straightforward. Um, we could also do circumscribe, meaning we're gonna use the other side of my rectangles, okay? Um, and what that looks like then, notice, is you still have this one half here. Let me change colors there. Uh, but now the first endpoint would be the left endpoint. So zero would be my height. So this is the height of rectangle one, the zero, 16 minus zero squared. And then rectangle two, rectangle three, rectangle four, rectangle five, rectangle six. So this is pure arithmetic, nothing tricky. We're not really going to do this. This would be an estimate. And clearly, I hope you can see the more rectangles we have, the better the estimate's going to be, right? But of course, the more rectangles we have, then the more math there is and the harder that is. Um, I might have some numbers. No, I don't have actual numbers on, on here. I don't know what those equal. It doesn't really matter what they equal. We're going to find the real answer in just a second, okay? Um, one of those uh, answers is going to be too small. You can chuck, plug and chug on your calculator if you want to know what those numbers are. They're not really important at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to generalize. We're going to say, well, you know what? Clearly, one of these is too low. One of these is too high. And also, clearly, the more rectangles I do, the better. So what we're going to do, guess what? We're going to use a little calculus now, very little basic calculus. We're going to still do a lot of arithmetic, but now we're going to use infinitely many rectangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just saying there are n rectangles, okay? 
and then take what we're going to get a formula at the end of this that has n in it and then once we have that formula we can take the limit first of all we could plug in any number for n we could plug in the six and get my answer like the same answer i would get right now or i could plug in 12 or 20 but we're just going to take the limit as n approaches infinity and we'll have our area the actual area or what it's approaching um, so we're going to start by um, assuming n rectangles like i said i'm going to use the inscribed rectangles i could use the circumscribed i know the inscribed have to be a little bit easier for this one but it's not a huge big deal so bear with me here. This is going to be a little bit weird the first time. You might have to run through this example a couple times, I think, to really kind of grab it. So what I need to do now is find the width of each one of those rectangles, first of all. So remember, if there are n rectangles um, in general, we have an interval from A to B, we'll call it now. So however, remember, we're just starting with n rectangles. So the whole width divided by n would be the width of each one of those rectangles. In this case, my interval is from 0 to 3. So that length is 3. And therefore, my width of the rectangle, so what you see right here, the width of the rectangle is 3 over n. So we're going to take that 3 over n, and we're going to multiply it by each one of the heights. And um, notice what happens. I do this is this little point right here. So if the width of every rectangle is 3 over n, that means this is 3 over n, right? So that means that first n point that I'm going to plug in to find the height is actually 3 over n, right? And then the next one, 6 over n, another 3 over n, and so on, 9 over n, and so on. So that's what you see right here is I'm going to plug 3 over n, 6 over n, 9 over n, 12 over n, so on, so on, so on, all into the function. So I want to generalize that, and I call that 3k over n, right? So I'm just generalizing that sequence. 3, 6, 9, 12 is basically 3k over n, okay? So now what you're going to see, oh gosh, now what you're going to see me do on the next step is plug those in. So I have my summation formula. Let me erase this so you can, oops see it a little better this is my formula right k equals one to n of f of 3k over n times 3 over n so that's what you see me do next so here is my f of 3k over n right 16 minus 3k over n squared times 3 over n okay uh, the next step is just a little simplification i uh, just squared the 3k over n so i got 16 minus 9k squared over n squared squared times 3 over n. So I have this summation now that I have to deal with. Um, I'm going to give you a little, couple little things here to help with that, first of all. Um, the next thing you see me do uh, is a big jump. So actually, you know what? I'm going to, before I do that big jump, let's uh, not confuse the issue here. Let's kind of hide this right here. This would be the smaller jump. So what I did was I actually uh, factored that n out. Or that 3 over n out. 3 over n, the n is actually a constant. It's some number, right? Remember, it was the number of rectangles in the first place. So it's just a constant, so we can get it out of there. The k is actually the thing that's changing. Notice uh, here, k, oops, k equals 110. It's actually the k that's changing. We're going 1, 2, 3, up to n. All right, I'm going to show you real quick, and I'm going to send you this to uh, this is um, some form summation formulas, actually. You did some of these, actually, in Algebra 2. Um, uh, they're nothing you have to memorize. I'm going to give you these sheets all the time. Um, actually, you know what? I don't know if I'll send you this or not, because um, it's on a separate page. Um, maybe you can just take a picture of this, stop the video, maybe take a picture of it or write them down or whatever. I think that's probably the best way. But they're just summation formulas, it's the summation of uh, K um k equals one to n of k adding up the first k numbers adding up the first k squared numbers is the second one adding up the first k cubed numbers is the third one so they just have formulas uh, if i had more time i'd probably prove these formulas they're kind of cool to prove actually but i don't think i have to have them memorized we're just gonna uh, give them to you and use them in these problems so my example down there at the bottom is k squared minus 4k plus 3. It's just a way to break it up. So I broke that up into k squared, 4k, and 3. And then I just dumped in those formulas, right? The uh, k squared is the n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6, 4k, and the, uh, 3. I remember if you're just adding up k equals 1 to n of 3, just kind of 
flipped over that k equals 1 to n of 3, that's just 3n, because it's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 so many times, right? All right, so these are going to get plugged in the formula. So if you come back here, notice I have 16 minus n squared minus 9k squared over n squared. So 3 over n is factored out. And then what I did is those I did those substitutions. So notice the 16n comes from that 16, right? I'm just adding up 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 n times. And then I get 9k squared over n squared. So again, I factored out the 9 over n squared because that n is just a constant. And then that k squared is the n times n plus 1 times 2 and plus 1 over 6 from that second page. Now all I have to do is simplify this, pull off some algebra, and I'll be done. So here we go. Um, just so you can see what happened now. Um, I know there's a lot of steps going on here. <clears throat> so that what I did first, remember that 3 over n is sitting right out here. So 3 over n times 16n gives me the 48. Okay. And then 3 over n times uh, 9 over n squared gives me the 27 over n cubed times that n times n plus 1 times 2 n plus 1 over 6. Uh, this is now, at this point, this is just a formula for the sum, right? So if I plugged in n equals 6, that was the number of rectangles we used in the first problem, I'd have my same area that we got before. But what I want to do is take the limit as n approaches infinity, right? So it's just a limit problem. So the limit as n approaches infinity of 48 is 48. All of this is just a higher power rule. Notice on the top, we got 27 times n times n times 2n. So there's a 54n cubed on the top, and there's a 6n cubed on the bottom. Higher power rule. The n cubes cancel out in essence. They're the same. So the answer is the coefficients, which is the 54 over 6, which is 9. 48 minus 9 is 39. 39 is the actual area under that curve from 0 to 3, using, in essence, infinitely many rectangles. So that's the process. You're going to have to play around with a couple of precise ones where they give you the actual amount of rectangles, and then you're going to have to practice this little method of uh, your algebra and your summations. I'll move to this again so you can just see those. If you want to see them at the end, um, make note of these. You will need them. Um, you would never need them on a test. No one's going to make you memorize these. I'm just going to uh, use them. So uh, that's that for uh, this one. The homework, uh, we're kind of in the book, out of the book, we're bouncing around in this chapter a little bit. So some worksheet stuff. Um, also, so we'll see you next time.